another day, another dollar. Here we go again. I'm actually gonna hold off on continuing the fitting until I have the petticoat done, just because I feel like I can't fully fit the skirt and like figure out how much I wanna take out of the skirt until I know what the fullness of the petticoat is gonna be like. And also my fabric for the petticoat came in. It came literally like the day after I ordered it. But it's not fully my favorite. That's on me for ordering this and not just ordering like a regular white lining. It's gray in some lights and white in other lights, which is super annoying. And then like the other side is like white-er, but just barely. And also I kind of hate the texture of it. I'll be able to use this for like the underneath the base structure of the petticoat. And I'll probably only use it on like the top half. And then we'll use the satin and the chiffon that we found the other day on the bottom half and basically like anything that's sticking out of the ripped hem will be in those fabrics and then the rest of it will be basically in this. I also think I decided I'm going to draft a whole new pattern for the petticoat. I haven't decided if it's going to be separate yet or not. I think I'll probably just end up sewing it on as if it's a lining to the dress instead of having it separate and having like multiple layers that then you have to like situate i think just in the long run it'll be easier if it's all one piece but basically making a new pattern that's an a-line skirt will be easier just because of like the gathers and everything putting it on a circle skirt and then also i like haven't fit the circle skirt properly yet so it's just it's a whole thing that needs worked out <laughs> i'm gonna start drafting that it'll be super easy or it should be super easy i basically just have to make it like wide and then add gathers and then yada 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 you'll see it and okay, the lighting in here is absolutely whack. I'm hoping it's better on my actual camera instead of on my phone. Okay, we're shooting. And I don't have anything else ready. I'm about to get really in depth with the patterning. Um, I'm including almost all of the patterning for this piece because uh, this whole episode is just about the petticoat so why not include more of the pattern making aspect but also some of it does happen out of frame so i'm going to include little drawings of what the pattern piece looks like um, on each step when i feel like it's important i found my a-line skirt slippers so that literally makes this a hundred times easier than i thought it was going to be i thought i was going to have to draft this but i already have this but i have my front and my back we're going to start with the front I'm just being silly, but we, we still have to um, use the slash and spread method. So I'm basically just gonna come in with my longest ruler and I'm just gonna mark out four different lines. Um, usually you would wanna measure this. I'm just gonna eyeball it. And then I'm basically gonna go like this. I didn't even need this piece. Oh, we can use it on this next step though. Nice. I'm a genius. All right, I'm gonna mark more of the, the hip line because I actually wanna use that line. Where's my hole? Nice. Okay. I'm gonna eyeball this, which is a big no-no because -no, I don't know where my hip curve is. Okie dokie, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut down these lines because we're adding gathering. Next, I am going to take another piece of paper and apparently two. Um, yeah, and I'm going to tape it and I'm gonna leave a quite a bit of excess on the top. This is why you want actual patterning paper because then you don't have to tape all of these pieces together. This is our second piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remark out this line. Okay, and then how much gathering do I wanna put in this? This is the top one, so it doesn't necessarily need that much. So I'm gonna add, if I add an inch at each of these, that adds three inches per quarter. Yeah, that should be good. So I'm just going over that line and I'm adding an inch to it. And then I'm going to square this on that line. This is the waistline. Okay, and then I'm gonna take our second piece. So 
this is one, two, three, four. Take our second piece, match up the waist, and tape it on. So now I'm just gonna go on this line, and I should also tape down that line. I'm gonna add an inch. And I'm gonna do key. And then we're gonna square off of the waist. Line that up. Add on our three, lining it up at the waist. Tape it on both sides. Lovely. Now we're gonna add our third inch. Like this, I have like literally the perfect amount of paper. This is crazy. Square off the waist. This actually could not have worked out better. So if I look at the suicide squad, the dress comes to like, this is her knee. So it comes to like mid thigh on this side. Okay, so I can do a ruffle here. Or so let's say like we do a layer here and then we can do a layer here. And then that bottom layer. Okay, yeah, so I want one probably mid thigh and then knee height. Okay, I'm gonna say like 14 inches for the first one. So I'm gonna take my ruler and at 14 inches, I'm basically gonna just measure down and mark out like a very rough um, seam line. Okay, and then I'm gonna make a mark here, but then we're just gonna square that with the side seam as well. Oh, okay, and then I'm just gonna trace it on. Now, at this point, there are two ways that we can go about this. We can take new pieces of paper, slap them on top, trace this, call that our finished pattern, or we can make sure that this line is all taped up cut it, tape another piece on, and just add the seam allowance that way. And then this piece, we can add another section of paper and make this into the second section of skirt. Which, because I'm adding more ruffle even into this next piece, I think I'm gonna do the cut method. So I'm actually just gonna add my seam allowance to the waist. I'm using the method of trust the process. Okay, and it only curves until the hip notch, and then it's straight the rest of the way. And we're just gonna square this. That's our hip notch. And the rest of this is square. Okay, I just taped some excess to the bottom. I'm gonna add the half inch seam allowance. You get it, it's not that complicated. Okay, now for the bottom half of this section, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I think, actually separate this from this piece so that it's just this weird little strip here. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna do the new sections for the added ruffle and then tape it onto new paper so that we can do put it back together. Okay? Yeah, I'm gonna do that now. Okay, I got those all separated. I basically just marked half an inch out of the inch that we'd already added um and i marked them so that we know which side's kind of up and which one is which one and then i taped three pieces of paper together so now we're just going to repeat the process
Now I have to figure out how long this section needs to be. So I'm going to take my tape measure, and this is what, 14 inches? So I'm actually going to say like 14 inches from there to there. And then from there, I know that the length of our finished skirt right now on our sample is 34 and three quarters. But I want this to be like two inches shorter than that probably. So I'm gonna move this up to 32 inches. And you can see where I marked those, 34 and three quarters and then 32. And this is gonna be the exact length of the ruler. So that is actually kind of really cool. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing we already did. And um, let's finish the hem off with, hmm, how do we wanna do the hem? I guess actually, I don't know that it really gets a hem. So we'll just add a half inch seam allowance, just in case. We may as well like semi finish this and then tear it up. I should have just cleaned up, you know, before I hit record, but it's, it's fine. I drafted the center back, the, yeah, the back of the skirt off camera and I only drafted the top section um, it'll pair with, with this because I'm just going to use this same pattern realistically. It's not going to be that much different. It'll be like basically the same seam line and it's going to be ruffled and gathered and all the nonsense. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. You know, realistically also most of this piece isn't going to be there on the skirt because like half the skirt isn't actually going to exist. So I'm just gonna go through this one and I'm gonna mark out like a halfway point on this one because I'm gonna wanna attach like a, a secondary ruffle on top of this out of probably the chiffon or the bridal satin. I am more leaning towards the chiffon though, but actually, actually, we do like a little bit of this and then lay this over top and then like you know and this will pretty much and then like cut this back further than this so that this just hangs there you know that could work that could work actually oh i have a vision um i just want to shout myself out really quick because i laid out the the blackout lining fabric and i was like oh I'm not gonna have enough. Like what, how? Uh, I mean, I did guess, but so I literally lined everything up so that it's barely like covered. And I mean, honestly, I don't need all of the sec the bottom half, but this pattern piece is 19 inches exactly. And the amount that I have left here is 19 inches and 1 16th. So it's, it's all gonna fit. It's all gonna fit and I'm gonna do it. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, turns out I was optimistic too early. I'm losing about an inch and a half, but it's fine. This doesn't need to be perfect anyways. And there's gonna be stuff over top of it. So I'm also doing something out of my comfort zone and I'm cutting this out with a rotary cutter. Um, I don't, I don't know how to feel about it. Okay, everything's all cut out. I think I'm gonna overlock the edges and then run a base stitch through like all of the top edges so that I can start gathering them and then I'll attach this one to this one and then I'll just like baste this edge. Yeah, I, I have to sew them together first and turn it into a skirt, but you get what I mean. You get what I mean. Yesterday I sewed the side seams and then I basically put weights on them to hold them down because they weren't pressing very well. This material is super duper annoying because it's coated in something that like when you do a top stitch it has this coating on the inside that shows through that's black so i was gonna top stitch it more but now i'm not because it looks ugly but i now need to make the ruffles that need to go on 
between like the bottom half and the top half if you get me so i think i'm just gonna use the same pattern and like cut like cut it roughly and then like just literally throw it on because it doesn't need to be that full and then when i do the second layer on the bottom half then i'll make that one a little bit bigger but that's that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna start spacing out like the time that i'm out here for the mornings because it is just getting hotter outside so it's like it gets really hot in here so when it's like cooler in the mornings is when i'm gonna be working now so everything's not going to be like one continuous long day anymore because it's just it's too hot to do that um i'm gonna cut out the chiffon and then sew it yeah that's the plan for this morning now okay maybe we get the petticoat done today yeah um i i lied to all of you i actually am doing it on satin and not chiffon and i added like an inch here and then I'm basically on the bottom because I want two ruffles. I'm just gonna cut this layer like here, not on the pattern. I'll probably take chalk and just mark like a really rough line since they don't need to be perfect anyways. Um, yeah, and then this one's gonna go until here because that's basically the same line anyway. So I'm literally just gonna cut it here and give this side like an extra inch. And then um, try to duplicate that. <laughs> The back panel but I didn't feel like moving all my shit apparently to have more space to work yeah okay I'm a liar sorry so I only have enough fabric left to cut one section of the bottom piece which actually is fine because most of it's gonna get cut off anyways uh, but the way that I'm gonna do it basically is I've just lined up um, enough to have like half an inch above this line here that I kind of sketched on and then I'm just gonna cut the rest of it out I added like a little bit of extra but then I have this fabric pen that then just has this random eraser and I tested it out already and it leaves like a tiny bit of residue but it's going to be covered up anyways because it's just me adding the seam allowance on so I'm just going to mark it with the marker cut it out and then erase it and then after that I'm going to just overlock everything except for the bottom edges for now at least and then I'm going to start sewing and ruffling and, and we'll check back in. Each layer is now a singular piece. So now I'm gonna take a like a basting stitch through this layer, which is this the second ruffle, and then I'm going to attach it to the bottom section. To this bottom section, it'll attach here. Um, and I'm also gonna ruffle this, and then I'm gonna attach those to this section. I'm feeling real chaotic right now, which is, you know, that's great. So I'm just gonna keep sewing. Full ruffle, attach, attach, okay? And then ruffle, ruffle, attach. And then that one is um, probably gonna hold for now. I may ruffle it and like kind of like pin place it on, but I'm not gonna attach it yet. I started pinning the ruffle to the bottom section and then I started ruffling it and I very quickly realized that that was just gonna make my life a million times harder so I separated them and then I started pinning the first ruffle right sides together to the top section instead. This was just gonna make my life a whole lot easier attaching them separately and then they'd also have a slightly different ruffle to them and give it just a little bit more oomph. So when I ruffle it, I'm basically just pinning the center front, center back together, and then the side seams together. And then I pull on the top stitch of our basting stitch and get it to the same size. And then I pin it in a couple different spots so that everything kind of will stay evenly ruffled throughout. Then I ran another basting stitch through both of those layers and unpinned everything except for the center front and center back. I'm currently feeling like I don't like it and I'm not confident in how it's gonna like look. So I attached this ruffle and that was kind of my point of like, Ugh, I don't know if like this material is gonna like ruffle as much as I want it to, which actually now that I'm looking at it, it kind of is. I'll put a basting stitch through the top and I'm just gonna like pin it under the sample on the dress form after like ruffling the top bit to see how it's like looking before I go ahead and attach like the bottom section. Yeah, there's also gonna be like, I have that whole second layer that's gonna go over top of this one too. 
So I just want to make sure that it doesn't look like super dumb under the sample. Okay. I may have been scared for nothing. I may have been a silly little goose. Okay, honestly, it's kind of perfect. I was apparently scared for nothing. Um, it is hanging much better than I thought it would. And also, like, this is kind of falling wonderfully. And once it is, um, once it's steamed, it's gonna be, um, gorgeous. So, I just need to get the bottom piece of this on, and then the top piece of this on. Yay, yay, okay, I was terrified for a minute there. I was so scared that the pieces were gonna be way too big, but also like way too small. Like I thought that, that this was gonna be like too much material and it was gonna hang weird, but then this was gonna be like too little, you feel me? But I'm actually pretty happy with it. Like it gives it like a little, a little something but also it's gonna be so easy to just tear this to shreds. So the last thing I'm gonna do today is just get the top ruffle on this and then it'll be semi-complete and then I'm gonna put it on the dress form and then call it for the day. Okay, day three technically I guess of working on the petticoat. Um, I feel like I got most of it done yesterday actually and I actually, I. I honestly can't decide if I'm gonna attach it to the dress or not. I think I'm leaning more towards not and just having it on an elastic waistband underneath. Especially since all the ruffles for the dress are gonna make it like an extra thick waist seam. I don't wanna have the ruffles on the petticoat like doubling up on that. And if I put it on an elastic, I can like move it around on like depending on where it sits on my waist, if that makes sense. I got my steamer out so that this morning we can steam the petticoat and then I think I might gather the final ruffle piece and just pin it on and then I think we might start tackling the top skirt a little bit today but I also have the world's worst migraine so we'll see how far we get. We might just end up finishing the petticoat and finish episode three which is crazy. I can't believe we're already three episodes in and I know that we're gonna do, we have we still have to do the fitting, or like the skirt, and then we have to make the actual dress, which we're still waiting on fabric, which is still, it's still like a week out at least. And then we have to weather the dress, and then we have to do the wig and figure out the makeup. And then I have to decide if I wanna do the javelin or not. And I was looking at javelin stuff last night, and I honestly have no idea what I wanna do for the javelin, so. We still have lots ahead of us. And I also planned what the next cosplay we're gonna work on is. And then I also was looking at more options this morning. And I think there's another one that I want to potentially tackle after the next one. The next one's gonna be quick. And then the one after that, if we do decide to tackle that one, is gonna be um, a much longer project. So we got lots to look it up. Okay, while my steamer heats up, I'm actually gonna pin up this dress again. <clears throat> because I want to steam the petticoat and then we're going to steam the mock-up. <laughs> this is going to be a little weird on the muslin because I do have the side seams pinned. But. Ta-da! What's left to do? Well, 
um, everything else pretty much. But this has been our petticoat interlude. Yeah, next time we're gonna tackle the skirt and fitting the skirt and then cutting the shape out. After that is all done, we're gonna start working on the actual bodice and I'm gonna be doing it a very interesting way. So yeah, once our accordion pleated mesh comes in, that's when the real fun starts. And that's when we can start making ruffles. Oh, we gotta do that next time too. I gotta figure out ruffle width because it's like five and five. There's like five that are fully complete and then five that are the ones that are torn. So yeah, we gotta figure out, we gotta do more math. Hopefully it goes better. But if you liked it, please like the video, subscribe, it's free. You can always unsubscribe later. And you don't want to miss out on this absolutely thrilling content. Check out my TikTok. I am also active on Twitch. I play games over there. I do makeup. Um, cosplay streams are going to be start happening soon. So check me out over there. Give me a follow. Yeah, that about does it for now. If you want to see sneak peeks of what is happening in here and to this, follow me on Instagram. My Instagram stories are back and they are better than ever. Yeah. I will see you next week on Friday. Bye!